I thought I'd be running to the uh, lumber store, to the woodworker source, to buy some wood for this, but I found a nice little supply of Wenji. Look how long it's been sitting on my shelf. You can tell, look at the difference in the shape from where that was facing up. And that's the downside. And, um, I mean, there's quite a bit of it here, too. There's plenty out. Um, this is from a project I did a few years ago. There's leftover pieces, and there's quite a bit of it. And this is pretty expensive exotic hardwood, too. It's a nice dark color, which is what I'm looking for. This is going to be perfect, and I think there's more than enough here to do the whole project. So um, that's what we're going to start working with is this Wenji. Yay! Money not spent. So far I am uh, 20 hours in on this project to get the glass ready and to get to where I'm about to start cutting wood. So let's uh, take it from here. Okay, so here's what I've done, um, and as before I even tell you what I've done, let me remind you, I am not viewing this as a fine woodworking project, because the way I've gone about this is not the way I would go about a fine woodworking project. This is an arts and crafts project. Um, I cut the, uh, some Wenji strips. The, this Wenji was just a little more than three-quarter inch wide, which is perfect, because I was shooting for three-quarters. It worked great. I didn't even worry about taking it down. Cut them at about uh, just uh, like three eighths of an inch thick. This is the base that the uh, glass will, the first painting glass will sit on and will build up off of. I drilled a hole down in this piece here where the light strip will come in to be attached here. I'll put it back on it later. So from here, the next piece of glass will go on here, like so. And then that's where it's going to get interesting actually, because then what I need to do is build up. I'll build the next set like this. Yeah, we'll just sandwich that sucker. It's gonna have a frame on the outside that'll tie it all together and hold it firm. So yeah, 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 yeah. So we're just gonna sandwich this right on top, just like this. See, we figure this out as we go. Then of course this piece will go on there. We'll sit up on here, probably not that far. We'll do thinner. And then the next one up on top of that. And then we'll build a case all around it and voila. Uh, these joints that I put on here, for those who are into the wood part, working part of it, are just butt joints. Nothing fancy, just butt joints. I was very generous with the glue because it is end grain to face grain, which is not ideal. It, it This needs no strength. It, it's just, it's never going to have to endure anything. So, and again, it's just an arts and crafts thing. And this part's going to be downright hidden. You'll never see it. So. Uh, I'm happy enough with the butt joints, they will be fine. So I'm going to let that glue dry and then we'll uh, start to build up the next layer. It's coming. So I got those little, you know, this, I don't even know what to call them, the supports glued up. And I've just kind of set everything in place here to get a look at it from here. Actually, it's a great way to see. We'll build a, uh, you know, the box around this and then nice uh, face plate around the front to hide it. And, uh, it's looking cool. We're ready to get back to work. I've got maybe a, somewhere between a half hour and an hour to work on it today is all the more time I have, but we'll see what we can get done. As I've been building it in my brain since uh, the last video we took out here, a couple of things have occurred to me as far as the process I want to continue on from here. One, this hole in the side was kind of dumb. I don't want the hole in the side of the box the more I thought about it. I want the wire to come in from the back of the box. So this hole is for naught, but it doesn't really matter because it won't be seen. And it did allow me to do a test run on here, which was nice because that test run got me reinvigorated about this project. So we'll do a hole in the back. And I did want to see 
how bendable the hole may actually need to come in kind of high in the back to give this time to twist out straight. Let me see real quick here. I would like to know, because if I'm going to bend this to go back, yeah, that hole's going to need to be uh, like an inch and a half up from the bottom. So, anyway, so there's that. Okay, steps from here. And I should stack this back up. Actually, it'd be easier probably to figure out what I'm doing. Um, steps from here. First step, I want the back of this to set into the box recessed in so it doesn't show from the sides. And what I'm going to do is cut that back first. So we're going to cut the back and I'll stack it underneath here so this sits up on it so we can see it. And then I'll use that for a measurement for how wide to make my sides. And then glue the sides on and that back should then sit up and everything will be nice and flush. Um, wait, that's not right. Am I thinking about that wrong? If I want that back to sit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. All right. Got it. Um, let's see. What else? When I cut the sides, I want to make sure I remember to do my sanding on that inside wood that's going to be very visible on these parts. Get that sanded before I put this all together because it would be uh, a hassle to sand it afterwards. Um, then, what else? There was something else. I will miter the edges on there. I'm going to use this, that nice plank here is what will cut those sides out of it. It's already been resawed down to, looks like, Looks like a quarter inch, maybe just a little more than a quarter inch. It's perfect. We'll miter those corners. Is it even a full quarter inch? Yeah, it's like a sixteenth more than a quarter inch, so that's beautiful. What would that be? Uh, a five sixteenths? So that's that. And, oh, I wanted to think about when this sits on my piano. Let's see if I can pick this up without breaking it. When this sits on my piano, do I want it sitting like this, or do I want to build my sides in such a way that it sits angled back? I could have it angled back, but still flush with sitting on the piano. So the what's going to happen for that to happen? Actually, maybe I can't. Yeah, the side would have to come. I hope this is on camera. So when I build these sides, this is going to actually come out past, no, er, backwards. This side is going to come out past and angle down like this. Now that puts a monkey wrench into my miter plans because now we're talking about crazy compound miters that I'll never, ever, ever calculate correctly. And even if I do calculate correctly, I'll never get them to actually sit together right. So if, let me visualize this again. If I build this front out, so it comes down and it leans back, it's going to sit flat on the panel. Who cares? That doesn't have to be mitered down there. You know, at the bottom, so the bottom won't be mitered. Top corner is mitered. Bottom at an angle. Bottom will just go in there with the butt joints. That should be fine. And I think with that, we're ready to get going. So I'm going to go ahead and get a back cut for this. Uh, which will just be the same dimensions as my uh, square here, uh, my, right, my rectangle. So we're just going to make a back that's the same size as this. Maybe a, a 1 32nd smaller, so that it actually has just a little bit of play. And we're ready to get after it. Woo, let's do it. Let's not waste any more of our limited time today. So here's a thought, and I think this all fits fine. I maybe cut those a touch wider than need be, but I'll be able to set them back. I have no issues there. What I'm realizing though is that I can't just sandwich these in and call that good. The, the glass pieces, they're going to need to be secured 
somehow in position a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is just uh, use some hot glue. A little hot glue on the edges to hold those on their respective wooden plates. And then the wooden plates will be held in place by the sides. So glad I thought of that now. And we're going to go ahead and get those hot glued into place before we do anything else. All right, I think the hot glue's hot enough to get this. And it's pretty flush on the top and bottom. It doesn't leave really space for gluing that. Just glue the sides and honestly, I think that's gonna be fine. I do wanna make sure that the glue does not come above the solder lines because that'll screw up my spacing. Just gonna get it down there in the, just connect the two. I could put the glue just on the wood and then set this on it, but Doing it this way, let the car pass. Doing it this way requires a little less precision because the glass is already in place. I don't have to worry about setting it down exactly in place. Okay, all three glass pieces are ooh, very brave. Glued in place. This is how we find out if the glue worked. Let's find out together. Ah, two for two. <laughs> this is so stupid. Okay, three for three. Boy, if one of those had fallen and breaking, I just would have broke down and cried right here on the video. Uh, okay, so anyway, we got those in place, and now we stack them up, and uh, we're going to start putting the frame around it. We'll start with the top piece, mitered corners on down, tapered bottoms. Uh, I do want to do a measurement or two, make sure I taper. I don't want to over taper it. I'm sure that once it's all built and assembled, I'll put also. Uh, some sort of diagonal brace back here because it would be awful if the whole thing just kept falling backwards. A um, couple other random thoughts. We'll drill the hole for the wire and get those in place, the lights in place later when we're ready to install the back. I will install the mirror on the back at that time. I will also get some, uh, I've got some black India ink that I'll black India ink the back just so it doesn't stick out like such a sore thumb with the contrasting colors. And uh, those are the those are the multiple things that we have yet to come. So let's get busy. I know 44.9 would be great, but we want 45. Come on, give it to me. Oh, 45.0. There it is. Lock it in. All right. So first piece cut. We're going to get that glued into place. Um, here on this top one, the only, the only one it actually goes on is the big one, so it's the only one I need to have right now. I do have a little issue in that um, I want to, once I get it glued to the spot, I want to use my pin nailer to pin it in place. Problem is the shortest pins that I have, and I'm sure they make shorter ones and I don't feel like running out, the shortest pins that I have are too long. They, um, they're longer than both of these boards combined and they will pop through. So when I pin it, I need to make sure I pin it only on the edge here. Don't forget, only on the edge with the pin nailer. All right. So uh, we're going to use the back here just as a spacer, as a sizer to make sure we've got this right. And I'm not going to regret this for any reason. I don't believe so. Because the only reason would be if these really are a little too wide, I want that overhang to be underneath, not above. And I would need to know that right now. And they are... <laughs> there is a little overhang, it appears to me. Here's one way we can find out. There is a little overhang by about oof, yeah, there's a little overhang. So I want that overhang underneath, not above, right? Because if I go to put my facing on. I don't really want that gap between the, or do I? Maybe I don't care. Maybe I do. Maybe I'm happy to have that gap there, right? Does it matter? Is it going to hurt anything? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. 
We're good to go. Just do it. Do it. Come on. Do it. You'll never regret it. No regrets. No regrets. All right. I'm going to be very generous with the glue here. Very, very generous with the glue. comes a point in a project where you go, well, I'm committed now. <laughs> and I think this may be that moment. Nail this. I'll probably put clamps on it too just for a little while because why not? But for now, let's pin nail it just to make sure we're in place. I do love my pin nailer, by the way. It's uh, like a Brad nailer, except they're much, much smaller nails, they're pins, and they're much easier to hide when you go to do your finishing work. I mean, they, they practically hide themselves. All right, so, man, I wish I could pin it in the center, but I can't because the pins are too long. So I'm going to put just a little clamp on there just to, just to, you know? Just. And then I think this is where I have to stop for today. Do you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. He's coming this way. It's the ice cream man. The ice cream man is coming. See if you'll be able to hear him. <laughs> oh my gosh, here comes the ice cream man. The merchant of reasonably priced temptation. <laughs> that is... He's playing happy birthday. Yeah. And he's gone. Didn't even stop. I must not look like the ice cream eating kind to him. All right, anyway, this is where we're gonna stop for today. And uh, when we come back, we'll do the other sides. I've snuck back out here for just a little more work today. I don't have a lot of time, but I can get squeezed a little in. Crazy, I completely forgot what I had said earlier, which is I wanted to sand these inside edges before I put them on. Ugh. But anyway, I took this and I sanded this inside edge. I went through all the grits down to 220 real quick. And then to put the side on, I wanted to, I want to make sure I'm keeping the same side out <clears throat> on all these pieces for around the frame. So this one where I had cut my miter off before the miter was this way and I needed, you know, was this way, I need it this way. So I flipped it over just to put a new miter on before I went to, went to cut. And I wish, <clears throat> I wish that I had filmed it because I just put on an amazing demonstration of why we wear goggles, face masks. I, I like the full face mask, it's just easier because I wear glasses, glasses, the protective glasses over glasses is a pain. Full face mask is nice. But as I was cutting off this little, essentially triangular piece, son of a gun, if it didn't catch the blade and jump up and smack me right in the face mask, kapoop! And uh, it was a beautiful little display because I did everything safe. I was off to the side even. I wasn't behind the blade. Uh, it just came off at an angle and it hit me right in the face mask. And thank goodness I had it on. So a uh, little demonstration I wish I'd have filmed of why. Anyway, back to this. I got that miter uh, switched over so we have the correct side facing out. We're gonna put it on here, we'll measure it, we'll cut it. But remember, this is the one we're gonna do at an angle. So I need to know how much of an angle. So I've stacked my parts back up here and I've put a set, whoops, well, I've started a set. What I'm going to do is set this on my bench just as a kind of a guide. And this does not have to be precise. I just wanna get a, you know, I wanna, get an angle that I like, but uh, small differences are not gonna matter. I'm gonna get down here where I can see. 
Oh, and of course that doesn't go to zero on my, eh, so I'm gonna add a quarter inch or, or subtract a quarter inch from whatever I see on here. So, oops, hey now, hey now, let's not break anything. Let's keep this lined up. There's gotta be a better way to do this. But I kind of want it to be at an angle, like say, not a lot, just like that much. Hey, hey now, I said, you stay put. Which honestly is only going to be, probably it's only, I mean, it only needs to be up like, what would that be, an eighth of an inch? Wait, that's a half inch, that's a, no, that's a quarter inch. If I'm measuring a quarter inch, I'm sorry, if I were that one, well, that would be zero. I know that ain't right. I think it's, well, actually, if I set it on here, that's a quarter inch. And that's not bad. Maybe only a quarter inch. We're going to call it three-eighths of an inch. We're going to raise the front edge up three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and now put this aside again. We'll get this in place. I'm going to mark where a flat edge would be if I were going to do it flat. And get this miter lined up perfectly. Get that on there. Let me go ahead and mark basically my zero edge, like this is the back right there. So what I will do now is draw that line straight across. That's where the, that would be flush, right? And then from there, on the front edge, we'll mark that down three eighths of an inch, draw that angle, cut it there, and we are in business. Got this side piece. Oops! Got this side piece cut. There's our angle. Boom, 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 boom. Of course, we took the miter saw back out. Had put that away a little prematurely. So uh, that looks really good on there, right there. Is where it's going to go. So what we're going to do now is sand it. We'll get this inside edge sanded. We're going to duplicate it for this side up here, and then we will uh, get those guys attached. And now both sides are cut, not glued in place yet, just sitting here, but they're both cut. Very happy. Let's see how that'll make it lean back. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my hot glue heated up again and just tack these upper two layers in place a little bit. I'm not really like trying to give it strength by tacking it, I just don't want it sliding around when I'm putting the sides on. Uh, oh, I'm gonna sand this one. I sanded that one, I have not sanded this one yet. I'll sand that. And then we're going to uh, glue those guys into place. And uh, we are motor scooting right along is what we're doing here. Oh, fooey. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I needed this. Look what I did here. That back corner is flush. Oh, that's a mistake. I wanted it out so that I could glue a bottom on across it. Oh, so now, now I'm going to stop the video and take a moment to ponder my options. Well, I can ponder them right here live. I can either, oh, that would be a butt joint across the bottom. If I just glued a bottom on right there, you'll see the joint on these outside edges. I don't like that. I think I do have enough. I did cut an extra strip in case I needed it over there. I could redo them. I could just redo them and get it right. That's probably the right thing to do. Boo! Boo on me. Okay, so, uh, son of a gun. I got these so good, too. I guess I'm going to redo this. If I don't come up with a better solution before then. Could I cut a wedge that sat? Ugh, no. Not easily. All right, I think I'm going to be redoing these. Um, anyway, so once I get that redone, then I've got some little strip pieces. Let me find them real quick, and I'll show you. They're over here. These little guys. See, nice little strips that I cut off on the end of those other pieces. And what they will do is they're going to get just uh, hot glued on, like along these inside edges here, just to hide the edges of this guy and up on the top of that guy there up in there. Those will get done. So those are the next steps. Oh, I can't believe I got to redo that. Son of a gun. Well, there you go. This is what happens when you don't draw up plans. When you just wing it, you got to be understanding that, well, you're winging it and you will find out that you goofed. And I goofed. So there it is. Just a goof. Just a goof. Not the end of the world. Thankfully, I have enough wood. 
uh, to do it again, so I'll do it again. That'll... Okay, camera back on. I got a different solution. I'm not doing them again. This is probably just me being lazy, but you know what? This is the bottom. It sits on the piano. It's never going to be seen. I just need to cut a thin strip that runs, let's see, just like maybe the top half of this across. Whoops. Basically, all that's for is it will uh, be the support that I put the face frame on. And no one's ever the wiser. No one's ever the wiser. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So uh, back to plan A, which is sand this sucker, get these guys attached, etc., etc. And then I'll catch you back up. All right, after further consideration once again, I've just been thinking about it. And you know, this is going to have the LED lights lined into it right inside of here. And man, I'm just going to really be so upset if light escapes out of this thing from the bottom and you see it glowing from the bottom somehow. It's going to just make me sick. So I am going to go ahead and redo these after all. Not that big a deal. Just, just have to... Just have to be willing to admit I goofed. Um, it's a pride thing more than anything. So I will uh, redo those, lengthen them out so I can actually put a piece in there. It'll look nicer if anyone ever picks it up and looks inside, although to heck with them if they do. What are they doing anyway? And um, yeah, so I'm going to redo those sides. Gah! Uh, but here's the thing. I'm not going to redo them today. I'm done. I'm, ch I'm checking out, and uh, next time I come out here tomorrow, tomorrow's a holiday, so hopefully I'll have quite a bit of time tomorrow outside of my other home duties, and uh, we'll get those redone, and heck, not out of the question, we don't finish the construction of this thing tomorrow if I have enough time. As promised, I redid the sides. Those are uh, done, sanded on the inside and glued in place, those are good to go. I've got the bottom piece cut, it's not glued in place yet, it's just sitting there right now. We're gonna glue it up next, but one thing I wanted to show you is, because we cut these at an angle, womp, 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 that means when I put the bottom in flush to that angle, the top is not gonna be parallel with this, right? So what I'm doing is, when I mount the bottom, I'm gonna leave it just a little bit proud so it'll be off a little down here because I'm using the same wood and I'm not going to cut another piece of wood for this one thirty second of an inch. But uh, we'll leave that just a little bit proud. And then I'll take a uh, little hand planer and just zoop and square that thing off so we'll be able to put our face plate on there. And then we're going to be in great shape. Um, I'll tell you what, that glue's not even set yet on the sides, but I bet you I can show you already. Looky there. Oh, yeah? Right? See where we're going with this? Tell you what, that's pretty stable too. I, I'll probably still put a triangle on the back of it just to make sure that it doesn't fall backwards, but uh, it's pretty stable. So, uh, bottom done. So next I'm gonna take these uh, little strips that I've cut off and we're going to cut them to size and glue them on this edge right here and these edges down here, here in there uh, just so that those aren't visible because they're set down in the box up here I don't need to worry about this edge the face plate I'm gonna put on will hide that but those will be seen so I want to cover those with these little strips and that's just gonna be a little bit of glue on there easy peasy oh and I suppose across the top as well oh and I'll miter those corners ah very nice okay so cruising right along I've got those pieces cut in in place Nice job I did on those miters. Those are hand cut because those pieces are so thin you can't put those. I put those on my saw. This wenji will just explode. Uh, it'll tear out badly. So I hand cut those and uh, did a reasonable job on them, I believe. So now I have uh, ripped off these guys here, these pieces off my uh, on my table saw, and uh, they will be the face plate around the outer edge. And I'm going to get that knocked out right now. And here we have it. So from here. Put it up here. From here, what I will do is um, I get that even just with natural light behind it. Oh, so neat. When this is all lit up, it's going to be so beautiful, I think. Uh, so anyway, next step is to go ahead and finish it. Um, we're going to keep it pretty simple on the finishing. I got a lot of sanding to do here. Some sanding to do. It's not that much, honestly, I guess. Uh, we're going to get this sanded down, and then I'll put a um, just a Danish oil on it. We're just going to keep this kind of natural. Do a Danish oil on it. 
uh, we'll let that cure. We'll continue working while it, after the Danish oil, but we'll let that cure for a little while, and then um, and then I'll come back at some point down the line and hit it with a paste wax, and then that will be done. And um, I'm really happy with this. I got to say, very happy with this. this. Is looking very nice. I'm glad I did not give up on this project. So. Let me get the sanding and, and some oil on there and then we'll start working on getting the lights installed and the back put on. Let's test fit that back actually. Let's take a look here. Let me lay this guy down. I freaked out a little bit ago. I thought I had cracked the glass down here and I don't even think you can see it. It's down here. Yeah, you can't even see it here. But it's not, it's not, oh here's one here, there's two places. Here's the other one right here. I thought I had cracked this glass. But it's not cracked. That's hot glue. <laughs> when I hot glued it in, a little string of hot glue came across it there. Don't. It'll never be seen, obviously. It's not a problem. But for a moment, I was like, how did I do that? How did I crack the glass? Oh, anyway, so the back. Let's see here. We got that down here, the back. And again, I will uh, dye this with black ink so it'll be black. Not bad. There's a touch more play in there than what I was going for, I think. But uh, it works. That'll work. We'll make that work. And so uh, I'm off to do some sanding. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the neighbor's lawnmower as they're getting their landscaping done right now. Uh, so we got it all sanded. It never ceases to amaze me how smooth Wenji feels. I mean, it is so soft to the touch after you sand it for this thing has given me more splinters and beat the heck out of my hands for the last couple of days. And now it is just, oh, feel it, feel it. Oh, so nice, like a baby's bottom. So anyway, I am, uh, I got this little fill pencil, blend fill, fills imperfections. I tapped in all of my pinholes and uh, I am now just filling those in with this color that closely matches Wenji so that, uh, they will be at best, or I mean, excuse me, at worst, uh, a little less obvious. So I'm gonna work on this for a little bit and then we will get that oil on. Guys, oh my goodness, I'm about to cry because, can you see it? It cracked. Oh, it cracked. And there is no going back to fix that now. Oh. That is heartbreaking. So obviously, it must have happened while I was sanding. I was just moving too quick and swinging the thing around to the next side to sand. And and son of a gun, I must have dropped it, put it down too hard at some point, and it said, "That's enough for me." Oh, that makes me so sad. But at this point, I just got to live with it. I mean, at least it didn't break out completely. It's just a crack in the glass. <laughs> I'm so sad right now because this looks so cool. Alrighty. Well, just thought I would show you that. Oh, so frustrating. Okay, so I'm setting up to oil, trying to pretend I didn't notice that crack, trying to pretend I don't care about it. Oh, but it's devastating. Uh, this is a piece of tack cloth. It's sticky cheesecloth. And we're just going to use that to make sure we got all the dust off of this before we get after it with the oil. And, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing here. Um, so when I do oil this, by the way, I've decided I will not be oiling the inside. Just the outside. I won't bother with the inside. We'll keep that natural. Um, I don't want to get oil on the glass. I don't necessarily think it will hurt, but it sure will not be fun to clean up that rag in there. Come on, here we go. And away we go. This is going to be nice. Oh, how pretty is that? Can you see that? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Loving it. Loving it already. I've got the uh, coat of oil on there. This uh, Wenji being such an open grain, just sucking it right up. I'm going to let that happen. Probably give it you know, 10 or 15 minutes to suck it up. And then I will uh, come back and hit it with a second coat. Might even do a third coat. Normally two would be plenty on any, but I might even hit it with a third coat. And then um, like a month from now, two months from now, I will bring it back out here and do a paste wax on it. 
but um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Other than that crack, ah. <laughs> oh well. Okay, got a hole drill. Let's do the India ink. I don't know why I'm so sure you're curious to even see this. It's just ink. We're gonna block this black. Is what we're gonna do. Um, this stuff though. What did I get it for initially? There was something, there was some project I had where it just, I, I needed a piece like this to match, like something very much like this. I just wanted it dark. And I thought, I'm just gonna try India ink. And I, you can get a bottle like this on Amazon for, I don't remember what I paid for it, less than $15, 12 bucks maybe. Um, maybe a lot less than that even, I just don't remember. But like this is a lifetime supply too. And there's nothing fancy happening here. I really should have gloves on. I'm going to regret not putting gloves on. I'm going to end up with ink all over me, but I'm not going to. Just, uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to spray, man, I should really go put gloves on. Ah, I'm going to put gloves on. Be right back. Now let's get this up. And we're just going to splotch a little on right here in the center. Doesn't take a lot. And... Spread it around. That's really all there is to it. And now this back piece will not stick out like such a sore thumb. Um, I went ahead and stained both sides. One just because any black that shows would be nice to any any backing that shows would be nice to have it black, although none of it should show. But also because that India ink is very wet and it is soaked through the side, and I didn't want this board to go all warpy, so I did both sides. I get these out of the way, and I've got these mirror sheets, and I'm going to go ahead and just put them on directly um, and try that first. After seeing it lit up when we did the experiment the other day, I think it's going to be plenty to get the job done. If we decide, ah, oh, I could use a little brighter after I light it up, then I'll figure out how to go ahead and curve that top one in a little bit. Uh, to help reflect forward the light. But I think, honestly, this is going to be plenty good just having it on that flat, so we're going to do that first because it certainly is easier. Let's peel off this back. The things I decide to show you on video, I don't understand myself. Like, why would this be interesting to you at all to watch me put a mirror on this back? I don't know. Maybe just because I'm excited to do the assembly, get this thing together and see it. Has uh, made me just decide on your behalf that you are also excited. <laughs> uh, put that there. And this has like a plastic over it that I'll peel off when the time comes. No need to do that right now and get it any dirtier. How many sheets do I have left after this? I still have two more sheets, so perfect. If this doesn't work, we've got plenty to try something else. And let's pull this off here. Isn't this exciting? Isn't this what you click play on the video for? I appreciate it. I've got so far, and I'd have to go check my sheet actually where I've been keeping notes, I think I've got 25 hours of work in on this now. And this video is probably 23 hours long. <laughs> uh, oh, we're going to want to uh, be aware of our hole actually for the... Right, right, right. Let me grab some scissors here. And without being too precious about it, we're just going to notch out the little area here where the hole goes. We're going to flip it over and cut off all the, the hangover. It's so exciting. This has got to be the most entertaining video you've ever seen. I know you're smashing that like and follow button right now. It's like, I need to see more of this guy cutting excess mirror off the edge of wood. That is entertainment for my time spent right there. All right. There's that. Boom. So simple, right? Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and peel this off now just to, just to do it. Just to do it. Oh, it is a mirror. Okay, I was slightly concerned that it may not be all that shiny, but that is very much a mirror. Very shiny, very good power cord. I'm going to feed it through the hole. This is it. We're coming down the home stretch. This is very exciting. 
So, we're going to put this uh, down in there and have this curled up on the side by about that much. Press that into place all the way across on this side and it should curl up this side about that same amount, close to it. Nice, good, 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 good. And then here's where things get interesting is how is that going to react with the where I placed my hole? Should I place that hole higher? Nah, we make that work. That goes. A lot of cars driving by today. And why is this standing up proud now? That should not be proud. It was sitting before, so something about this is holding it up. Can I shove a little more cord in there? Hmm. Let me have a peek. See here. What do we got going on that is making it? Oh, you know what it is? I think, well, I think just where I doubled up the mirror. Okay, it's not gonna hurt anything anyway. So let's, I'm just gonna tape this in place for right now. I'm just going to tape that back on while we decide if we like this mirror placement or not. And if we do, we'll glue that guy on. So let's set this up here. I'm not even going to like turn off the lights and close the door. Let's see how this looks in broad daylight. And let's light it up and see what we get. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Got the back glued on in place. Brought it in, put it on the piano. It's finished, folks. And I am very very happy with it. This is in the middle of the day. It is bright as can be in this room and it's still just glowing nicely. When it's when the lights dim, when it's not so bright in here, it's going to just shine. I'm very excited about how this turned out. This was a fun project. Thank you so much for following along. Uh, I hope it maybe inspired you to try to do something similar. Work with some stained glass. It's a great little hobby. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Desperate for subscribers all the time, and thanks again for watching. This, is, uh, this was fun. We'll get some more videos of projects coming up as soon as I can.